solving two-step and multi-step equations. Our objective is to solve equations that contain more than one operation. Why learn this? Equations containing more than one operation can model real-world situations such as the cost of a music club membership. To do this, we need to work backwards. As a helpful guide, it might be helpful to think of undoing, so undo addition and subtraction, first, then undo multiplication and division. So you're going to use your inverse operations for addition and subtraction first, then undo multiplication and division. Keep in mind, if there's parentheses in there, that's going to come after multiplication and division. You're basically doing your order of operations backwards. Let's try a couple. So we want to solve two-step equations. So we want to get the x in this equation by itself. All right, so our 6 and our 2 are both numbers on the same side of the equation as this variable x. However, which number is being added or subtracted to something to deal with x? Well, the 6 is, because it's 2 times x. So you're going to do that after you undo addition and subtraction. So you undo addition and subtraction first. Now, are we going to add 6 or subtract 6? Keep in mind, the sign in front is a positive 6. So to undo that positive 6, we're going to subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. That leaves us with 4 on the left-hand side of the equation and minus 2x on the right-hand side of the equation. We're not done yet. To solve equations, you need to get x entirely by itself. So you have to go another step. All right, so we have negative 2 times x. The opposite of negative 2 times x is to divide by negative 2. So we're going to divide by negative 2 on both sides of our equation. So we have 4 divided by negative 2, which is negative 2. And now x is by itself, because we've now canceled out the 2, or the negative 2, sorry. All right, time to double check. So we substitute negative 2 back in for x. And we want to see if, in fact, these two things are equal. So is 10 equal to 6 minus 2 times negative 2? Well, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. 6 plus 4 is 10. So yes, we're good to go. Let's try one more together, and then I'll have you try the two on the right on your own. So let's start by drawing our line here and we want to undo addition and subtraction first. So we're going to subtract 2 from both sides of the equation, which leaves us with n divided by 7 equals 0. Well, we have division. The inverse operation of division is to multiply, so we're going to multiply both sides by 7. All right, so our 7s cancel out, so we're left with n on the left, and we have 0 times 7. Well, anything times 0 is, in fact, 0. So now, n is by itself, so let's substitute 0 in to double-check our work. So we have 0 divided by 7. Well, that's 0. Well, is 2 equal to 2? Yes, it is, so we're good to go. Take a moment and pause the video and try the two on the right.
Now that you've had a chance to try the two on your on the right, let's try them together. So we're going to draw our line. And now we have to undo addition or, sub or subtraction. The 7 is not the one being added or subtracted to the x. So we're going to undo the other operation first. So we're going to add 4 to both sides of the equation. As adding 4 is the inverse operation of minus 4 which leaves us with 7x on the left-hand side of the equation and 7 on the right. x is still not by itself, so we need to go one step further. So we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 7, which leaves us with x equals, well, 7 divided by 7 is 1. All right, double-checking our work. 7 times 1 is 7. Negative 3, or sorry, negative 4 plus 7 is 3. So we're good to go. Let's try the last one. We'll start with our line. All right, now we're going to undo addition and subtraction first. This 5.7 is what is being added or subtracted to this value of y. So we have plus 5.7 on both sides of the equation, which leaves us with 1.2y on the right-hand side of the equation, and 7.2 on the left-hand side of the equation. And now we need to divide by 1.2 to get y by itself, so we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 1.2, which leaves us with 6 equals y. Time to double check. So 1.2 times 6 is 7.2. 7.2 minus 5.7 is 1.5. So yep, y is in fact equal to 6. Let's get a little more complicated. All right, so now we're dealing with fractions. So let's do this first one together. Start with our line. All right, we want to undo addition and subtraction first. So we're going to add one-fifth to both sides of the equation. Now, both of our denominators are the same. And when our denominators are the same, then we can simply add or subtract. On the left side, we're left with q divided by 15. And now on the right side, we have 4 fifths. We're going to add our numerators together, and our 5 stays on the bottom. All right, so since q is divided by 15, we need to multiply both sides of the equation by 15, so that way we can get q by itself. So that gets rid of our 15, so now we're just left with q. And then we have 4 divided by 5 times 15, which leaves us with 12. Double check our work. So we have 12 divided by 15 minus, so we have 12 divided by 15 minus 1 fifth. Notice, our denominators are not the same, so we need to make them the same. So we have 12 divided by 15 minus, our least common denominator is 15, so we're going to have a 15 in the denominator over here. But to get this 15, we multiplied 5 by 3. Whatever we do to the denominator, we must do to the numerator. So that leaves us with a 3 on top. All right. So we have 12 minus 3, which leaves us with 9 over 15. And if we reduce 9 over 15, we end up with 3 over 5. So yes, it does work. So our check was actually more work this time than 
solving it to begin with. But it's always good to check your work. Now, you guys need to pause the video and try the one on the right. Now that you've had a chance to try the one on the right, let's try it together. So we're going to start with our line so we can see both sides of the equation. And we're going to add one half to both sides of the equation. So we're left with two fifths x on the left hand side of the equation. And on the right side of the equation, we're left with 11 halves because five halves. So if we're looking at five halves here, so we're kind of deviating off to the side. Five halves is the same thing as saying 11 halves. All right, so now we're, we're still working on trying to get this variable by itself. So we have a fraction. So when we have a fraction multiplied and we're going to divide by a fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 5 over 2. So now we're left with x equals 55 over 4. All right, time to double check our work. So we have 2 times 55 over 4 divided by 5 minus 1 half. Does that in fact equal 5? For time constraints, I'm going to suggest putting this into your calculator. Make sure you put parentheses around important aspects when you enter this into your calculator. And when you do, you end up with 5. So yes, x is in fact equal to 55 fourths. Now we're going to practice simplifying before we solve. So. When we simplify, we want to make each side of the equation look a little bit nicer before we continue. So we're going to combine like terms, giving us negative 2x plus 3 equals 13. And we're going to solve now. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, which leaves us with negative 2x equals 10. And then we're going to divide both sides by negative 2. So x equals negative 5. If you plug negative 5 back in, you end up with 6 times negative 5 plus 3 minus 8 times negative 5, which in fact gives you 13. So you're good to go. Take a moment and pause the video and try this next one. Now that you've had a chance to try this next one, let's try it together. So we're going to start with our line, and it might be beneficial to distribute this negative sign. So we have 6 minus x minus 2. And now we can combine like terms. So 9 equals 4 minus x. So we can subtract 4 from both sides of the equation, which leaves us with 5 equals negative x. And we need to multiply both sides by negative 1 to get rid of this minus sign. So x equals negative 5. And when you plug negative 5 back in, you do in fact get 9, so you're good to go. Let's try one more together. We have 3a plus 12 equals 30. Then it says find the value of a plus 4. To do this, you need to figure out what a is first. So take a moment and pause the video and solve for a. The answer will be revealed when you return to the video. All right, so a equals 6. Once you have what a is, you can substitute that in to find the value of a plus 4. So 6 plus 4 gives you 10. So there's your end result. If you have any questions, ask your teacher. However, this ends our lesson on solving two-step and multi-step equations.